Hey y'all, Editing Khaki here. Kicking off the video with a weird disclaimer. I had had a panic attack earlier in the day before filming this and I took some medicine that helps a panic attack. It really helped, but like I am super low key in this video. <laughs> Like, it's like the opposite of day cool khaki. So if this is your first time watching one of my videos, mm, don't get used to this vibe. The vibes are a little off in this one. The makeup is lovely. The conversation is lovely, but like I'm rewatching it. I'm like, girl, where are you? <laughs> so that's why full transparency. Hello, welcome back. I just got back from visiting some friends in DC and I got a chance to go shopping in person at a few different places. I'm always surprised by what entices me when I'm actually swatching in person and I had friends with me. It's more enjoyable to swatch things. You feel like you can spend more time doing it and we did. Mainly we went to Blue Mercury and Sephora and it was me and Steph of Beauty Unhyped and Natalie of My Skin Trust. I ended up picking up four things, things that really resonated with me and I'm excited about all of them. The new things are the new Rosewood shade in the Dior Rosy Glow. I did pick this up. Steph had it on and it was just beautiful. Then I was in Blue Mercury and to be fair, the Blue Mercury lighting, they make everything look so spangly. It's like cell phone lighting, but like the whole place, you know? And so everything looks like incredibly sparkly. This is the new quad from NARS, the Laguna Sunset Quad Eyeshadow. You know, is this probably really similar? <laughs> to the Summer Unrated palette that I bought last year and also bought for Hannah last year. Yeah, I'll, I might pull it out and we can swatch them next to each other, but I found it to be very enticing, especially because I had just gotten done swatching a bunch of the Chantecai animal eyeshadows, the elephant, the pangolin, the giraffe, the cheetah. This was the answer to that for me. I was like, I can get four really great kind of shimmery pops in one palette. And it's new, which is exciting because it might mean that people are curious about it. I ended up buying two things that Natalie was very quick to point out are the same color. <laughs> oops, but not really oops because I don't think they're interchangeable in terms of formula, but they go together really well. And one of them is actually, like I said, not, not new at all, but it is one of the blushes from Hourglass. This is in the shade Loyal. Fits right into beige blush territory. Look at that. So definitely excited to show you all that today. I guess in combination with the Dior. And this is like a recommendation that has lived in my brain for probably years at this point, because I know that my friend Shelby Wilson loves this Armani lipstick in this particular, I think it's in this particular color. This is the Lip Power lipstick in the shade 102. And y'all know I'm not a lipstick girly, but this one, this is the one. As soon as I swatched it, I was like, it's not turning peach, it's not turning orange, it's not turning pink, it's not turning gray, like it's perfect. And I was right, it's awesome for my particular nude lipstick needs. So I'm gonna also be sharing with y'all the very quick way that I've been doing my complexion lately. I took some questions on Instagram and it's just gonna be a fun time. So let's go ahead and jump in. I don't know if you can tell, but I also talked a lot over the weekend. So my voice is kind of shot. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, oh. I've got the window open for y'all today. You can probably hear the birds. It's very nice. So what I've been doing for my complexion is I have been going in with a stick foundation. I mean, this is not new, right? But this has just been my personal favorite lately. Stick foundation, I've been using the Bosma in 38. The Makeup by Mario bronzer in light, the cream stick. And then I have my Oma double take sculpt and strobe duo stick in white pearl for my contour. And I do them all at once. I just like smear them all on and then I blend them together. So let's do that. Oh, I was gonna start with a primer. Coming back from DC where the humidity is just so lovely. I appreciate humidity. I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, where humidity is a thing and my hair is happy and my skin is happy. This is the Dewy Skin Vitamin C, Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer from Ciate. And this is what I'm gonna start with to compensate for how dry it is here. I do have the Merit Great Skin that Tom sent me, I miss Tom, but I am paranoid that it's going to disrupt or whatever my SPF's ability to work. So I'm just going with a regular primer. I don't know if this is any more or less helpful, but it's a primer. It doesn't seem oily. I don't know, science. Okay, now we can commence with the complexion routine. <laughs> so yeah, I go in under my eyes 
as if I would my concealer. And y'all know I've been more into a concealer that is like a dead on skin match for me lately. So it's really just about whether the formula gives me enough coverage, not about like brightening or having like several shades. It is giving me more slip because of that primer, which is exactly what I wanted instead of just grabbing. But I mean, this is not gonna settle into like your pores or anything, but I could feel it when I put it under my eyes, I was like, Ugh, you know, it's not an inherently dewy formula. I feel like it's very adaptable to what you apply it with. It's like Zoobly Zoo Face. Remember that's what I used to call this? Either way. Then I'm going in with my Makeup by Mario bronzer. The beauty of this is that you kind of end up with less makeup on your face kind of starting out. It doesn't mean I'm going to actually end up with less makeup on my face. I just mean I don't get ahead of myself right out of the gate. And then I have my Oma Contour Stick. Now, these all have the distinction, formula-wise, of being very blendable with a brush, even if you just apply them directly to the skin, which is not the case with everything. Like I wouldn't do that with like the milk makeup sticks, or I don't even think that I would do it with the hourglass blush that I got. So for this, I've been using a BK 101, and I am just mindful of making sure that I kind of do it one piece at a time, you know, because I'm not trying to actually pick up a lot of product because then I would end up like redistributing my contour in the middle of my nose or something. I did want to put some contour over my eye though, like there. I mean, like I said, it's fairly foolproof and as long as you haven't powdered or anything, you can always kind of go in and doctor it after the fact. But I will say that the one thing that's harder to compensate for is when you've put too much bronzer on versus not enough bronzer on. You can always put more on. It's hard to take it back off. Being really mindful of the contour. And it's just one of those things, it's like a TikTok trend, right? Where it looks really wild until it blends. I like to do this with the Tom Ford stick also, but the shade that I have in the Tom Ford stick is a little bit light. And when we were in Blue Mercury, I actually swatched a bunch of them and I found, I think it's called Light Ivory. I think that's what it's called. I took a picture of it and that's gonna be a more ideal shade for me. So I think I the next Sephora sale or something, like I'm not in a huge hurry, but I might pick that one up because I have really appreciated the formula. I like it a lot, especially as I'm in New Jersey now and the dewy skin is appreciated. You know, it doesn't have much of a dry down on its own, that formula, but I think that here it doesn't really matter. I've been doing a good job of not picking. So far, so good. I've been doing my skincare in the dark and I've just been absolutely smoking my skin with glycolic. Now, as I powder, I'm gonna probably go in a very similar format, just with powders. So the love affair that has been this LH Cosmetics bronzer, because they finally sent me the right shade. I shouldn't say finally, but like the first two that they sent me, I was like not able to give a very good review because the shades were so difficult to put on. But this shade Luminous is like, it's perfect. It's so perfect. So I am grabbing. BK 104 for this and I'm going to use it to kind of like set where I already put bronzer in a more concentrated way, but it just gives me this like sun-kissed glow in the most perfect color. This is basically how I did my makeup with everything that I packed for DC. So this is kind of like a what I packed for DC video plus what I bought in DC. <laughs> Bronzer. I don't wanna go too hard because you can very clearly see it's like a different color than my body. But if that weren't the case and I were wearing something that covered me up to the neck, I'd be going in. All right, so that's a little bit of that. I'm gonna do a touch of powder underneath my eyes just so that this doesn't get a chance to crease too much. But I think that the advantage of the Bosma is just how thin it is. Using the Kosos powder, I'm just, you know, always into the luminosity of it and I like the way it kind of will balance out the fact that we're a touch tan. And now we can start moving into some of the new stuff. And that's also nice because that's, I think that that's faster. We will find out when I edit whether it was actually faster, but it felt faster. This is really exciting. I don't know. This is just like, when I saw this color for the first time, I was like, that's just perfect. It's really just right there with like Mimi and uh, are we gonna have to do this right now? Let's just swatch it against Mimi and see. Or Latte, either way. So Latte from Anastasia is very similar to Mimi from Westman Atelier. Loyal is more intensely pigmented. It's, you know, more saturated. Very, very similar color family. And, you know, different formulas. The Hourglass, like I said, I wouldn't put it directly on my cheeks and then try and blend it in because it's a little bit higher pigment and a little bit stiffer. So yeah, I'm gonna grab that same brush because why not? Put that blush on there. Do, do, do. Okay. 
and it's like sunburn beige, especially letting my freckles show through on the complexion routine. Oh, it's just so pretty. I was very, very pleased when I tried it. It just has a way of belonging that makes me feel really comfortable going heavy with it, you know? Like I just want to use it almost as like an extension of my bronzer. It was actually awesome too, being in Sephora and Blue Mercury and shopping with, you know, two other creators who, you know, make this a large part of their lives. We all kind of know a little bit about a lot of things. And so being able to share that knowledge, is like, oh, you know, this came out with a certain amount of shades in it. And then they had to increase the shade range and things like that. And like, that's why it wasn't on my radar initially and stuff, or Natalie discovering the original Armani blushes that are like those funny putty blushes. And now she's currently running around DC trying to find backups and you know specific colors of it that she wants because we're pretty sure that it's being discontinued. I think that I heard that somewhere. So if that's not the case, then blame it on me. But either way, they're pretty hard to come by. So that's Loyal. I love it so much. It makes me really happy and it goes with all the other stuff too. Okay, let's see if we got any questions. Did you like DC? I have lived here two years and would love to hear your thoughts. So let's, I'm gonna prime my eyes. Yeah, these definitely need a primer, but that's not really a fair thing to say because everything needs a primer on me now. Do we have my Urban Decay Primer Potion? I thought DC was awesome. It was actually smaller than I realized. I really thought DC was like huge. I stayed at the Eaton workshop and they just had a lot of really cool like activism art and stuff and we went into the speakeasy and it had this just really cool Alice in Wonderland theme but it was it just had a lot of like underlying cool messaging and stuff so that was awesome I don't know it was just <laughs> I told them I was like I'm kind of proud to be in a hotel that like the art on the walls would make some people uncomfortable I like that <laughs> the weather treated us really nice it was pretty hot but it was really really nice and we had some great food some just ch just a chill time you know all right I'm gonna swatch this Again, this is called the Laguna Sunset Quad Eyeshadow. So it's just a quad of really lovely, either satin or like shimmer textures. And they all just look like something that I want to wear on my eyes. It was just kind of an easy decision for me. It is, you know, very typical NARS where it's like, yep, those are the colors that if I'm buying in this family in this time of year, like this, you know, kind of collection family, then these are the colors that you probably would expect to be in a quad from NARS. I'm gonna grab Summer Unrated. So if you didn't pick up Summer Unrated, I don't think you can get it anymore. It was like, I wanna say either a website exclusive and Ulta or only Ulta, but I mean, you know, it's just kind of a shrunk down version. I think that there's like less orange. There's less orange in Summer Unrated. It's a lot more pink and brown and you do have this really nice kind of orange copper. Like there is an orange in here, but it's kind of like a satin. It doesn't have any glitter in it. I mean, that's about the closest that you're gonna get on that. The shimmer is also, sorry, the champagne is also not shimmery. It's very like a very pretty satin. And then that, pink yeah like this one's actually more exciting but it doesn't have as much actual color to it like it's just more of like a texture and then there's like this magenta kind of but it also doesn't really give the pop that that one from the quad does and then you know a brown like that is like pretty standard issue for nars like that's very very similar but still i feel like summer unrated on the whole is less committed texture wise and pigment wise than this quad. So it makes me excited to use it and we might use Summer Unrated as well. But actually what I've been doing lately and I think that this is all like the theme of this is all in the interest of like ease. I've been just doing easier things for my face. <laughs> that makes sense like I've been simplifying my routine especially for travel because it's like a lot of times the lighting isn't awesome and you just don't want to bring as many things you don't want to bring like giant palettes or anything so the two things that come in really clutch are the Victoria Beckham eyewears I have pecan and trench and these are the ones that I just keep reaching for I think it's like an easy glam I don't even want to call it like a no makeup makeup kind of thing or like that I'm going for something really natural it does turn out looking, you know, pretty done and it's really fast. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. So I've been really, really putting this little workhorse through its paces. 
Pecan is just the one. They last for so long. They blend so beautifully and they just make the best, fastest backdrop for any eye look. Something like, yeah, the 211 from BK and just distribute that into a shape that I like, you know, that nice kind of like outer corner accent shape, blend it as well as I can into everything before it dries <laughs> because they do dry. But you can always add more and they're just so at home on my skin. It's just so easy. Especially laying trench down first because trench is almost invisible on my skin. It's pretty much exactly the same color as the lighter shade in the matte bronzing brick in one that I have. And so it's almost like a, you know, just off of my complexion color type color. And so if I lay that down first, it's just adding opacity to my skin tone on my eyes because you can see my veins through my eyelids. And then it's giving a little bit of slip so that I'm not just trying to blend pecan directly on top of primer or directly on top of powder, you know? It's like a mixing medium almost. Isn't that lovely and easy? I was able to do it while I was talking to you. It requires very little actual attention. And then we can get into the exciting things. But yeah, especially having spent so much time recently in the city and in, in New York City, <sighs> DC is just like chill. <laughs> it's so chill. I'm gonna start with this brown shade. They don't have names or they might have but I just, they're not on the package anymore so I'm gonna start with this brown and I'm just going to use that as a base here and then maybe it'll make a shimmer that I choose pop a little bit but I'm going in thin layers here I'm trying to avoid any fallout I don't know if these are necessarily really prone to it especially with a primer but I'm gonna layer something on top of it too. So I wanna keep as much of the like tackiness of the primer as I can. But that was one of the surprises when I got back to my hotel room and was using this. I was like, okay, the brown is actually really functional as like a, you know, a contour eyeshadow, not just as like something that's shimmery. In fact, you know, building it up, you don't actually get that much shimmer from it. It's got a nice shift, but it's not glittery like some of the other ones in there. So I think that it's like very subtly practical, isn't it? I'm very low key today, y'all. <laughs> Thank God. So what I can actually even do because it isn't as shimmery as I expected it to be is I can pick that up and use that also to enhance the crease here. Ooh, it's dark. It's dark when I do that. Look at that. Wow, it's really sticking because of the eyewear. So we're just gonna control the shape. Still using that same brush, kind of like a small blender brush. It's a shape I usually like, but a little bit smaller. We're getting a little drama, <laughs> maybe more than I intended. So next, let's go in with this copper color right here because I just wanna kind of chase this like warm sunburn feeling. And I'm just gonna tap that inner corner to like the middle, kind of. They're just very pretty, pretty, pretty shimmers, you know? Not indie beauty, multi-chrome or anything like that, but just very sexy. Venus just went into Leo today, which is an encouragement for everyone to get their sexy on, if that's, if that's your thing. I'm gonna grab the pearl shade in here. Use that as a really effective inner corner highlight. That's beautiful. And we're achieving something that's somewhere in between my passion for peach that's happening right now and my typical kind of bedroom eyes, sexy comfort zone, right? I do think that I'll wanna change clothes after this. <laughs> this eye look is a little bit, a little bit over the top glam for what I'm wearing, but. Let's take some of my Victoria Beckham bronzing brick and let that be the matte that we pull into the look to obscure a little bit of the skippiness that is achieved sometimes when you have, you know, all shimmer. So this is the bigger blender brush. This is the 201 from VK. And you see it's the same color as Trench from Victoria Beckham. So you can use that to break up any kind of harsher lines and then the fact that it's matte makes it so that the color can kind of stand alone without worrying about it, like reflecting on texture and stuff. Just kind of pulls it back down to earth. I'll take a smaller brush again here. This was the 209 in that same light bronzer shade 
and go underneath here, it's gonna be just a nice gentle transition from a smoky eye to like the rest of my face, right? The only thing I'm a little concerned about is just that like that inner corner is actually a little bit dark to be an inner corner shade. It's not like particularly effective. And I was going to bring this with me and then I dropped it. This is the Rare Beauty highlighter in God knows what. Enlighten, it's like the, the lightest shade. And it makes a very good inner corner shade, but they're so breakable. Like they're so prone to shattering that it's kind of like, what's the point? And then I have that NARS shimmery powder. This right here. I have this NARS translucent crystal powder and I'm gonna use that on the upper brow here. And I'm gonna use it to just kind of clean up all in here where I feel like it's just gotten distractingly like dark, right? I just wanna reflect the light there. Quite excellent, if you ask me. I like that very much. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this like I typically do. The Victoria Beckham, the lightest one right there, and I just kinda like to tap it right above my cheek look, right below my under eye. It gives me a little bit more even of a blend. And I mean, what we're ending up with today is quite tan, but I'm into it. All right, I'm gonna do my brows and my liner and my mascara and then we're going to come back and apply another blush and a lip. just top to bottom and I'm into it. I'm gonna see if like everything gets ruined by this Dior blush because I have no idea if it's gonna be kind of in the same family or if it's gonna go way too kind of like move on me, but either way. I think if nothing else, it'll kind of pull out a natural color in my lips. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a whirl. So again, this is the Dior Rosy Glow in 012 Rosewood. And I feel like we have some area up here on my cheek they could do for some more local color. That's so nice. Okay, Rosewood. Just kind of gives a little bit of like a pretty touch, right? To what was already very like sun-kissed looking. And I do think I wanna put a little bit of it in the eye look as well. So I will grab my 201 again. That's what that needed. And a little on my nose. I feel like my nose is missing. A little tip of the nose moment. I'm gonna do a little bit of powder contour and then we're gonna go in with this lipstick. I promise it's worth the wait. And while we do that, I need to hunt my phone down. It's on the floor. Oh, are we, this video is gonna go from chill to not so chill in one very quick question here. This is a three part question. This is probably bad vibes, but why are the Reddit beauty groups so hateful? I never use that site, but I asked a question about a product and they flamed me. Anyway, huge mistake, huge. Bad people, bad vibes, never doing that again. It's kind of like how I talk about like why I try and like, I try to curate my comment section in a way that it's not so much, I mean, yes, I don't like reading things that are mean to me, but it's also like, I wanna foster a place where other people, like they feel comfortable having conversations amongst themselves and it feels like a kind place to do so. And it's for that exact reason, because you know, where do you go when you have specific questions, right? And you're thinking, oh, I, this is gonna be a nice resource for me. 
And I mean, I don't know about all of the different communities, but I do know of a specific one, probably the biggest one. It's just kind of a place I feel like that has never been about the beauty gurus themselves. <laughs> It's about the people writing it, like being uncomfortable with other people having platforms. They just are. And so it's like they are waiting for an opportunity to criticize them because they just think that inherently that person, like, I mean, that's not everybody across the board. Sometimes there's praise, but it has to do with the size of the creator is something that I've really noticed. Like they'll praise you until you get to a certain size and then, you know, that's all bets are off. I think that it really is about people kind of wanting to decide that like you don't deserve to have what you have if you have a following or whatever. And so they're waiting, they're just waiting. And like in order to like know when someone has done something that you don't like, that also means that you have to like watch all of their content, which is like such a weird thing to do when you want to find something that you don't like. It's a lot of time to spend to find, to just be looking for something that you don't like, which is a strange, mental process for me. And I have come to terms with the fact that, well, I've come to terms with the fact that my face is a different color than my body right now. So let's all just breathe it in. But I've come to terms with the fact as I, you know, read it, read it, I've run across it over the years and, you know, people have kind of tipped me off to things that that's not the way that a happy person behaves. There are nice people there and they're doing the best that they can, but it's not a place that is particularly accommodating to nice people who mean well. They get downvoted and it's because the theme of it is not to be nice. I do wish that there were better communities online that, you know, weren't specifically on one person's channel or another to be able to kind of like open up and talk about makeup and it didn't end up becoming what that has become. But I just remind myself that that is like a thing that like no one would do if they were happy. You don't go around like, you know, finding reasons to complain about another person's behavior that has nothing to do with you. If you're a happy person, you just go, oh, that sucks. I didn't like that. And you just move on, you know? You don't need a bunch of people like piling on to agree with you or disagree with you or whatever. So, hello. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Well, his teeth. Yeah. If you want me to come up there and give him his medicine. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Let me know. I can run up there. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. I might need to go up and give Simon Motrin <laughs> because he's like chewing on his hands. I feel so bad for him. Ah. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, the only other thing that I was going to say about the Reddit forums is just that everyone that I've ever looked up to on YouTube or in social media basically has like a trail of hate that follows them everywhere from people who are jealous of them. And so I've always seen it as kind of like a weird backwards like sign that you're succeeding because everybody I know who has ever succeeded in any way that I wanted to succeed has always had just like na like a whole cohort of like nasty haters. And so you're always gonna be able to find somebody who has something nasty to say. I just don't go looking for it, but sometimes it finds me. It's pretty inevitable. But to your point, it sucks that there isn't like a kinder place. So you just kind of have to go to specific people's channels, I guess, unless somebody wants to start one. Okay, so we have the Lip Power Lipstick in 102 from Armani. It's so good. It's an enormous bullet. <laughs> the actual shape is really lovely. And look at that color. Y'all know I'm not a lipstick girl, but that is just everything. It's just everything, okay? I couldn't stop putting it on. It makes me feel like it's almost a little bit mod in the sense of it being as pale as it is and it being, you know, a straight up like lipstick, even though it's a creamy lipstick, still like it, there's just something really sexy about it. I like it so much. So let's give me a little spritz here. We're just gonna go regular Fix Plus. Yeah, again, coming to terms with the fact that my face is a different color than my body and that's just how it's gonna be today. It's not too bad, but I don't know. That's just what happens when you really like bronzer. But let my hair dry a little bit. Let's 
chat about the new things, although pretty sure y'all are on to me at this point as far as like, you know, how much I like this, these things that I bought. Especially because, you know, most of the time when y'all see me reviewing things, I bought them online based on my expectations that I, you know, saw pictures of and stuff like that. But these I got to actually touch before I bought them. And so I feel like there's a much higher likelihood that I was going to be pleased with my purchases. So starting with the Hourglass blush, this is called the Van, it's the Vanish blush, I guess, cause it's in the same stick as the Vanish, you know, foundation. And again, this is in the shade Loyal. Let me go ahead and swatch this against the, the lipstick that I got because you'll be like, oh yeah, Natalie was right. I love this. It's actually quite, a nice kind of hybrid finish. I wouldn't call it like super creamy or super matte, but it's like right in the middle and it has a lot of pigment to it. So it's gonna last a long time. And then this again is that lipstick I just put on in 102. So less saturated, but right there in the same color family. Isn't that lovely? That's like why they work so well together. They have that just like desaturated nude beige kind of thing to them. So some of my favorites, instant favorites, and the eyeshadow quad, I like that the colors themselves pack a little bit more of a punch than any of the ones in Summer Unrated does. And like, it's a very similar theme, right? This is a NARS summer release in its truest sense. It's, you know, very based on like the, the tan Laguna of it all. And I just really enjoy it. I think that the colors are really enticing and it's just, it's small enough that it lives in my flash drive memory of being like, yep, uh, those are colors that I can think of on a given basis where it's like, okay, I want to wear one or more or all of those. So I also like that, you know, it's not just like a Charlotte Tilbury palette of pops where, you know, everything is the same shimmer texture. I assume that's what's the case with the Charlotte Tilbury ones. I haven't used one, but I mean, it's a palette of pops. This, they do have slightly different textures, or at least the brown is a slightly different texture. So it's like, I can get a really nice base tone out of this and use any of these to, you know, manipulate the texture and manipulate the color. And I feel like it just gives you this really effortless, like summertime smoky eye. It's super sexy. I'm super into it. And then the Dior blush, very pleasantly surprised by just how easily that goes on. Doesn't go too pink, doesn't go too ashy. It was just lovely. It went on top of everything really nicely and I love the effect of it. And I think that the best part about this is even though I do feel like I did like every step in my routine, I still feel like I look really like beachy and natural because the complexion that I put on wasn't really high coverage. Like you can still see my freckles, but I got the coverage that I wanted. And so it's a pretty low contrast look. I think that that's the other thing that makes it look a little bit more natural. You know, I'm not like over brightened anywhere. So yeah, that and like, you know, the nice mix of textures where it's like some things are shimmery, some things are a little bit more mattified, some things are a little bit more dewy and you just end up with like this kind of pleasant to the eyes <laughs> kind of effect. So I hope that this was fun for y'all. I hope that, you know, I hope that you enjoyed seeing my little baby haul of things that I got in DC. And there were plenty of questions that I didn't get to. So I will go ahead and answer those on my Instagram. So go follow me over there, especially if you want to enter more questions questions in for future get ready with me. It's at Hey Khaki. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you so much. If you did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up and I will put a video over here that I think that you're going to enjoy. Please subscribe if you have not already and I love y'all and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.